Welcome to the social media session of JA Ethics Virtual. This session should take approximately 15 to 20 minutes with a short class discussion, an activity, and a closing video. On the right-hand side, you'll see icons used throughout the session. When you see the black pause play icon on the bottom right corner of a screen, please be sure to pause for the discussion and then play to advance. Ethical behavior isn't just limited to choices we make in the real world. Ethical choices also occur in the digital world too. In this activity, we'll be discussing ethical choices you might make online and on social media. To kick us off, have a short class discussion regarding social media in general. What's your experience? What social media sites do teens often use? What posts do you enjoy reading or watching? What's your least favorite type of post? Then come back and we'll do the main activity together. Now you're going to have the opportunity to consider some decisions that are commonly made in the digital world and consider whether you think they're ethical or unethical. First, there's going to be a scenario that someone will read from the screen and then students are going to stay seated if you think it's unethical and stand up if you think it's ethical. Then you'll provide some reasons as to why you came to the conclusion that you did. Then you'll advance the presentation to listen to some additional things to consider regarding that scenario. You'll then repeat the process for all eight scenarios. Consider this. In addition to possible short-term consequences you may face from your school, what you post on social media might be shared and shared again. Beyond high school, your future employer may have policies related to not disclosing information or comments about the workplace. If they review your social media and find that you're willing to post negative comments about your principal, it could affect hiring decisions. Consider this. Sharing an opinion about a public figure is not wrong, and it may seem like it doesn't matter because they are far removed from you but some comments can be unethical. False rumors about celebrities, professional athletes, or elected officials spread quickly and easily on social media. They can hurt a person's reputation and career. Beyond any possible consequences, you are making an ethical choice about positively or negatively contributing to the larger community. You can share a negative opinion if it adds to a conversation, but being mean in hopes of getting attention isn't good for anyone. Consider this. It probably seems innocent and ethical on the surface. Who doesn't love cute pictures of pets? However, your post reveals personal information about your neighbor and raises awareness that the neighbor is not at home. If your location or the neighbor's is shown, the house can become a target for burglary. Consider this, a video conference is not a public event where participants might expect to be photographed. Sharing and identifying people online, especially non-adults, can lead to unwanted and unexpected contacts. In addition, commenting about people is a form of gossiping and can be hurtful and sometimes even considered a form of bullying. Consider this. Even though classes are online, test taking rules don't change. Even though the technology is different, it would be the same as if you wrote answers on your hand or brought a cheat sheet into the classroom. It's a form of dishonesty. Even though there are appealing short-term advantages, there may be consequences if you're caught and you are potentially forming a habit of trading in real learning for dishonesty. Consider this. You don't know all the circumstances related to the news. Your friend may have wanted to tell certain friends or relatives in person before the news became public. Posting may cause your friend to distrust you and hurt your friendship. Consider this. This is another situation that may appear to offer the short-term gain of getting to see someone else's private data, but it could have significant long-term consequences. Broken trust can be difficult to repair, and sometimes you learn things about people you wish you never knew. 
Consider this. If spectators are using GoPro type cameras to capture footage of a sport or event, players are expecting their actions to be captured and shared. It's always a good idea to get permission before sharing anything that might hurt or embarrass someone, but generally this would be ethical. However, if a person weren't aware that his or her actions were being captured, it would be unethical to benefit from someone's pain and embarrassment. I hope you guys had a great class discussion and were challenged in your thinking regarding social media. To finish out this session, we are going to hear from Eric Sievertson, CEO and founder of Epicosity, which is a full service advertising agency in Sioux Falls. Hey students, welcome back. Well, you've gone through this important lesson. I wonder if you're thinking now, was this easy or was this hard to know which thoughts, feelings, photos, videos, and other information should we share online? Now think about why. Why is it hard to distinguish between those, those two different worlds? You know, it's, it's okay for us to have to sit back every now and again and say, what do I really think about this? And to think through all the consequences as we go along, because it's, it's truly an important thing that we need to be thinking about before we hit post or put information out, out on the internet. You know, really nothing on the internet is private. Uh, when you think about all the servers, when you hit post, it goes through an entire network of computers and networks and different entities that it goes through before it even hits the people that you're communicating with. And so really there's nothing out there that is, that is private when we engage in an online world. Um, in addition, when we think about the kinds of communities, think about the community that you live in, the network of families, maybe your family that supports you and things like that. When we create this, we create what's called a social community. We do that in the real world too. When we think about the social communities that we create online, you know, putting out things that hurt people, that are embarrassing, things that people uh, can't take back or didn't want the rest of the world to know, that doesn't really build a very healthy community for us. It doesn't build a good community for us to thrive in. And so when we think about social media and when you think about what type of person you're going to be online, I think it's really important to understand that you have a huge impact on how the people are viewed, how you're viewed and the reputation that you're building. Um, I think that's really important to think about that. And in addition, there's, there's other consequences that are really, really important um, for those of us who are younger or maybe teenagers, is we don't know what kind of insecurities, things that people are thinking about their bodies, things that they're thinking about their reputation or who they are amongst their friends. And so if we post some things that are really hurtful and something bad happens to that person, it would be really bad that I was a part of that or you were a part of that and making someone feel really, really bad. So that's really important to think about when you look across the room and the people that are sitting next to you in the classroom and those who are in your class, think about their feelings and depression and other things that could come up if we're really, really harsh and do unethical things online to the people that we know. Now, when we think about what we're doing online, I, I think it's really important to walk away with a key point here, which is when we're posting and we're putting information out there, it really creates a pattern and a habit and you are in direct control of what that looks like and how you present yourself. You are building a reputation. You are building who you are not only in the real world with, with interacting with people, but also clearly online. And so I think you want to ask yourself, what kind of reputation, how do I want people to view me? And, you know, how do we handle unethical situations and what choices do we make? You know, we're, we're in the driver's seat of that. And so I really, really hope that in the long run, you choose to be an ethical person and that you choose to be a positive person in the social community. Again, I'd mentioned this in, in the initial video, but I want you to think about this because I think this is really, really important is somebody that you admire, somebody you think very highly of, you know, think about them when you're posting, when you're putting on information um, out there and, and make sure that you, that when you're doing that, not only is it an ethical behavior, but think about if that person would be proud of what you're doing. I think that's really important gauge to, to, to everyday communication online. And just remember employers, uh, people that are looking for scholarships to give you scholarships for college, call it ad admission people, so many other entities now are going to social media to see what kind of reputation, what kind of person you are. 
So please, I hope that you've learned something from today. You've taken something away. It's been a pleasure to, 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 to allow to be come in and talk with you today. We, I really hope that you make the right ethical choices online and build yourself an amazing reputation. Thank you so much. We'd like to thank Eric for bringing us that message. So what's next? If you have more than 15 minutes, please go to the JA Ethics video bank and pick and choose some short videos from South Dakota community leaders. Otherwise, jump to the wrap up closing, which is 10 to 15 minutes in length and features a paper airplane object illustration and a short video from the Vanguard Squadron Airshow team.